Let's dive into Colorado real quick. Mm. But what a JV no segment, real quick. Let's dive into that. Um, all right, Smitty. University of Colorado came out in Nebraska. Eight of the first nine snaps and 10 personnel. All right. 10 personnel. That means what? One back, no tight ends. And this is the look that you got. That is what they came out in in eight of nine plays. What does this do to defenses? Pass, pass, pass. I'm thinking, but see, when I was at Ball State, we're making a blue call, a sky call. It basically means hey, we're going. It's pass rush. We're peeling back, widening our stands, getting ready to get out of the quarterback. That's the mindset. Yes, and we got a free safety, okay? So this is what they were coming out in, and Nebraska was coming back and just pinning their ears back. We're going to go pass rush. Our Mike had the running back locked. Our Sam Backer was playing a little bit of quarters trap. These guys are reading the coverage. So if they got a flat threat, he would trigger. If he didn't get a flat threat, he carried. And guess what? That's why he got a pick six on Shador later in the game. Because when we're in three by one and all we run is vertical, 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 and put this guy in harm's way throwing the football versus a six and seven man box, guess what it does? It creates mismatch problems for the offense. Because Tony White now is on defense like, well, shit, they have no running game, they have no running threats, and they don't have a tight end. And JB's about to break down what a tight end would do to the Nebraska defense if they would have put them in. All right? Ten personnel, we already know what it does. You add a tight end, and guess what? You go from this, okay? You go from that to this. Mm, six technique. So guess what it does? Creates a gap. It allows the de offensive line to do different things. It doesn't allow the defense to stay in the same defense. But when we're in 10 personnel without that, we can dictate to you on offense what we do. Offensive coordinator should dictate to the defense what we want to do. You don't get to dictate to us what we do, but we're in 10 personnel in Colorado is they're getting dictated too by Tony White. So if we added a, a tight end to the game, it allows us to do so much more. And if we added another tight end in the game and got into some other formations and stay in the gun, stay in the gun. JB, I'm a gun guy. Stay in the gun. But guess what it would do? Guess what it would do? It would change the entire game. Change the entire game. You could get a different front. You can do different things. Now I can go and reach and run you. Guess what? I can head this back. And look at this. We can do other things in the run game that will set up Shador Sanders' pass game. So you heard it here first, Coach JV, but what do I know? You got to see what we do. Smart splits. I've been doing that shit for a long, long time. Colorado on offense just isn't using the tight end sets, Mitty. Uh, they're really making themselves – predictable and i know smitty uh bailey and i got into a debate yesterday and i would love to do it with matt the problem is when you're this embedded in 10 personnel and throwing the football for your quarterback who you want to be the heisman right it, you can't just go to 11 personnel 12 personnel because what it does smitty and i could do it another segment on the board it changes the front remember guys every time you change the offensive formation it changes the front on defense. Right. If I add a tight end, guess what it does? I either tough look it with a Sam backer or we widen the D end out in a nine, nine or and six, put the Sam maybe. inside. Yep. It changes the front. Guess what it does to your O-line? It changes the protections. Now I have to learn an entirely new protection scheme, not only from the quarterback level, which I don't think Shador really has a grasp on the protections, but it does for the O-line. The O-line has to understand now, oh, shit, I have to change up and slide this way. Ringo, Ringo, or Lucy, Lucy, or whatever it may be because the front changes. You have to understand every time we change an offensive formation, if we go from 20 personnel, it changes the, form the front. If we go to 10 personnel, it changes the front. If we go to uh, 11 personnel, it changes the front. So you have to understand you can't just go to something you've never done and that you're not very good at. Because guess what? You still have to 
scout the team you're playing, Smitty. Mm. I still have to scout Colorado State this week. How am I going to put a new offense in and still scout and put together a plan for Colorado State? Not enough time, not not enough hours, literally. And and you don't have – I don't know when their bye is. Bailey and and Matt don't know better than – I don't know when their bye is, but a bye week you add wrinkles, Smitty. You add trick plays. You add special teams corrections, and you add some kickoff return juice. You do some other things. But you can't just go to something you're not. You can't just jump into 12 personnel when you really aren't a 12 personnel team. Like, let's be honest. I know Betty was telling me a story offline. He played with a couple guys there that in high school, and they're not really guys. Mm. And, 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 and so you got tight ends that really aren't tight ends, and they're really just bodies. But guess what? I've always had tight ends, Smitty, that weren't tight ends. You know what I did? They still create a gap when you put them on the line of scrimmage. Right. They still create a gap. Just put them there. Still just try to run there. the football. Yeah. Still try to run the football, even if you can't. I would rather have a different game plan up front if I'm Colorado by changing the formation than I would by just keeping the same shit. What is it? What is that? You know, that's a definition, the of, definition? of insanity right there. On, Doing man. the same things, but in a Come different on. result. And I don't know how it is on offense, but I understand what you're saying. Like you only got so many hours within the week to prepare for your opponent, to add in new wrinkles and plays, but you can't change the entire system of who you are. The only time we would do that on defense is if we had to play army. That was the only time yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, completely yeah. different defense. Yeah. Forget everything you've yeah. learned for this one week. Yeah. It was extremely hard, but we did make happen for, for that situation. But I don't know if offense could could do the same. It's a little different, different for offense. Hey, Bre- Bay so. by week for the Colorado was October 5th and November 2nd. Okay. It, if you wait till then to try to install an entire offense, your season could be over. Right, so right. So you have to do it little by little. Like if I was going to install something, I would install – a formation or, or something, but I've already done it in spring and fall and summer ball. I've already done it. So they know they're at least familiarized with, okay, we can add this at any time. Right. If you've never done it and that's not your identity, Smitty, I'm not going to just go in there and say, all right, listen, guys, we're going to go to 12 personnel team. We're going to run this. We're going to be a stretch zone, outside zone and power pin and pull team. And uh, we're going to put uh, two tight ends to the game to protect your door, blah, blah, blah. These guys are going to look at each other like, what the fuck? And then you're going to see a front change. And now the guys on defense have to get cards out. And now I got a card to hold another defense. What I think Colorado State will run against it because we ain't seen it. Right. So now I got to prep what I think Colorado State is going to come out in 12 personnel. You can't do it. There's too many nuances. There's too much to do. And listen, unless Shermer in Colorado is holding something we don't know and they have it in their bag and they've been practicing it, then kudos to them. But I just find that hard to believe based on what I've seen through two weeks. There are 10 personnel teams, many. That's what they do. That's where they live. They want to get the ball to Hunter, and they want to get the ball to Horn, and they want to get the ball out of uh, Shadur's hands quickly. And I don't believe Shadur can get rid of the ball quickly, and I don't believe their O-line's good enough, and I don't think you can add two tight ends to a bad O-line and expect them to go from a two-point stance to putting their hand in the dirt and get into a three-point stance and try to double-team Darnell Smith every single play. It just doesn't happen overnight. I'm telling you, it's a mentality. It's not a fucking opportunity.